Welcome and thank you for joining us. My name is Blaine Roski. I'm Director of Product Management for Brocade's Data Center Storage and Solutions Group. And joining me here today is Dennis Makashima, Senior Director of Brocade's Fabric OS, or FOSS, engineering team. And of course, FOSS is the operating system that runs on all of our data center SAN platforms. So thank you for joining us today, Dennis. Thanks, Blaine. It's good to be here. So Dennis, Fabric Vision technology really focuses around simplifying management, reducing operational expense costs, et cetera. What aspects of IT challenges present to the SAN administrator today really kind of drove us or motivated us to creating this new MAPS capability? Right, so there's a lot of IT challenges today that really drove us to develop the MAPS tool. Uh, one such challenge is the need for always-on infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, Mission-critical applications are, are running today with, with our SANS. And for example, there's credit card transactions, banking transactions, the government thinks that can't afford to go down ever. There's no downtime and you need to keep that infrastructure up all the time. Right. Another challenge is the infrastructure and the customer's environments are getting more and more complex. In the old days, you would see an eight port switch, 16 port switch, maybe one switch, maybe two switches, mm -hmm. and monitoring an environment of, of that nature was a little more uh, simplistic. Right. And nowadays, you see large customers with dozens of switches, uh, switches with hundreds of ports. So you've and got environments now thousands, tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of ports that these organizations are responsible for managing, right? Right, and so you really need to be monitoring all the aspects of the environment and all the aspects of the switches, mm -hmm. and so you really need a threshold-based monitoring solution to monitor all this environment and not have them have to go and look at all these individual things on their own. You really sure. need something that's going to be monitoring all this environment for them. Okay, that makes sense, but um, don't we already have tools to do that? For example, FabricWatch is a threshold-based tool for doing monitoring. So why did we create maps if we already had tools available to customers uh, previously? Right, so we have FabricWatch, and FabricWatch is a successful product that we've done, and FabricWatch does do threshold-based monitoring. Right. But what we found is that FabricWatch, uh, while it did a good job of monitoring, it, it really was a lot to, uh, to ask a customer to configure FabricWatch. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of things that you need to monitor. Yep. You have CRC errors, you have invalid transmission words, you have fans, you have temperature. All these have, different components and aspects that need monitoring, and then very, what, very specialized threshold levels that you've got to set all these uh, different thresholds at, correct? Right, it's, it's, it's a lot to ask a customer to even know what a CRC error is, but right. then on top of that, we have to ask them, okay, maybe you monitor and, and have a threshold at 10, uh -huh. at 100 per minute, and, and how does a customer know what to set them at? Right. And then another problem, is we have so many things to monitor just within a switch. Mm -hmm. And uh, as an example, you may have 384 ports on a switch, plus your ICLs, plus fans, plus power supplies. So it's and a lot of settings, to, a lot of thresholds to configure, right? right? right. And, and like you said before, we've got very large environments, not with just hundreds of ports on a switch, but multiple switches in a fabric, multiple fabrics to where it seems like it would take a long time to set all this up. Right, so there are two barriers. One barrier was the customer's knowledge to know what to monitor and to know what thresholds to set. And then there was the operational challenge of having them go and individually set all of these things and set the threshold levels and set up the actions. Right, so both of those were limiting factors and what were you seeing? So customers were spending an enormous amount of time doing this or weren't doing it at all? I saw a lot. I saw customers spending lots of time and really educating themselves, reading our best practice guides mm -hmm. and then they would complain it took them forever to do it. Sure. And it would, it would cost them dollars and time uh, to set it up. Another issue that I would see is that they would configure it but they wouldn't have the right thresholds. Okay. And then another issue I saw is that environments went completely unprotected and that would eventually lead to an outage and downtime, which gotcha. is the worst okay. possible scenario. All right, all right. So let's, uh, let's get into maps then a little bit because it, it sounds like we've addressed that problem. So Dennis, at the highest level, MAPS is basically taking a policy which is comprised of one or more rules and applying it to a switch. And so these policies, there's what, over 170 different rules 
in a predefined policy. Is that right? That's right. And then what we wanted to do is not expose the user to all of these different rules and, and have to go and manually configure all of these rules and all of the, the different elements. Instead, mm -hmm. we, could, we could have policies that have all these rules all baked into one policy. Okay, and is there a single predefined kind of default policy or how does that work? Well, every customer is different. So there may be some customers that, that really want to take action immediately. Mm -hmm. And if there's the slightest sign of trouble, they want to be really aggressive right. with right. the alerting or maybe with an action like fencing a port. Okay, so which, real, real tight controls. They want to really kind of clamp down on things. Right, and there's some customers that may want to be a little bit more conservative. They may want to wait to see a lot more errors before they go in and take action. Okay, so more lax. So that would be the conservative policy versus the aggressive policy. And right. then I understand there's one in the middle, the, the moderate policy. Right, and then there's a lot of customers that are right in the middle and, and, and by default we have a, a moderate policy and that's the, that's the default policy. Okay, great, great. Um, what if you want to change things? You like the aggressive policy, it's pretty much matching your needs and what you're, what you're looking for in your SAN environment, but you want to tweak a couple rules or maybe you want to add some new rules, for example. Do we have the flexibility to do that? Right, so most of the users, what we wanted to do is have them have an experience where they pick a policy, turn it on, and they're done. Right. right. But not every customer fits within three categories. Mm -hmm. So there's gonna be some customers that just wanna do something that's unique to their environment or unique to, to what they wanna achieve. And so sure. we have the ability for them to create their own policies. And um, they could either start from scratch. Mm -hmm. and Build up every rule for that policy right. on their own. And uh, a shortcut for them would be to take one of the existing policies and just modify the rules that, that they want to modify. Okay, so they're essentially then starting with our recommended best practice rules and they can tweak it from there. Right. Okay, great. And, uh, and again, we talked about how we had Fabric Watch before. Maps is kind of, it's, it's essentially replacing Fabric Watch. What about those customers that have been using Fabric Watch and they want to retain those settings but take advantage of the, the Maps framework? Right. We provided a way for Fabric Watch users to migrate all of their configuration into into Maps rules. Mm -hmm. And is that a is that a, something they have to manually go and do, or is, do we take care of that for them? It's an automated process. Okay, so they basically just turn on Maps, and all of their Fabric Watch settings are now rules within a new Maps policy. Right. It's as easy as that. Great. Great. Great, Dennis. So I think we've got a pretty good understanding of how Maps works. Let's talk a little bit about dashboards. I understand we've got a dashboard both in FOSS in the CLI that ties in with Maps, but we've also got the Network Advisor dashboard. So how does this work? We've got a roll-up summary categories that uh, integrate in with Maps? Right. So the dashboards for both CLI and BNA have multiple categories, and there's categories like port health, mm -hmm. through health, uh, fabric state changes. And these various categories have collections of groups um, and things that are getting monitored associated with that category. Okay, so if you have rules for SFPs and ports and different things that collectively roll up, they will, the summary of, that, uh, of those conditions are represented in the dashboards under the port category, for example. Right. Okay, right. so you've got that one-stop view to kind of quickly go in there. Are things green if you're using the uh, Network Advisor interface or using the CLI? Are they healthy? Are they in range? Right. Okay, great. That makes a lot of sense. Let's talk uh, real briefly about requirements here. So this uh, functionality for Maps is available in FOSS 7.2 and later, correct? That's correct. Okay, and as far as management of it, you can obviously manage all this capability directly to a switch using the CLI, or if you want to use Network Advisor, we need to be running 12.1.1 or a later version of, of uh, Network Advisor. Um, so tell me a little bit about uh, the platforms that are supported. Do we support all platforms, just the Gen 5 platform? What's supported here? Right, so we support the Maps feature on all Gen 4 or 8 gig platforms. We also support it on all Gen 5 or 16 gig platforms, and we expect that this is a feature that's going to carry forward into new products and uh, new generations of technology. Okay, so this is really the kind of go forward uh, monitoring capability for, for FOSS and for Brocade. All right, so I think we've got a pretty good understanding of uh, the motivation behind MAPS and uh, how it works. Let's go in and do a demonstration now and really kind of show how you would configure this, how you would manage it, whether you're using the CLI or Network Advisor to do that. 
We're now going to do a brief demonstration of the MAPS capability, starting first with the FOSS command line interface and then moving on to Network Advisor to show you some of the really advanced capabilities and simplifications that Network Advisor provides for MAPS. It is important to remember that MAPS is not external software-based capability. MAPS is functionality in FOSS running directly on each switch. And the benefit of this is constant, unobtrusive monitoring that was designed to work in harmony with other switch services and at the same time can provide immediate action when a rule is violated instead of waiting for some delayed polling period to expire. We're going to start with a switch that's already running FabricWatch and we're going to convert all the FabricWatch settings to MAPS policies and then we'll enable MAPS on that switch. We simply enter the MAPS configuration command to do the conversion of the FabricWatch settings and then you get a response back indicating that all of the FabricWatch thresholds have been converted over to MAPS policies. So now we can take that and we're actually going to go ahead and enable MAPS. This is going to disable FabricWatch, it will enable MAPS and we're going to specify the active FabricWatch policy that we had just created by converting our FabricWatch settings. You can see here there's a warning message just letting you know that uh, if you enable maps first and haven't done your conversion of your fabric watch settings, you won't be able to do it later. So it just gives you a little bit of a warning there. Asks you if you want to continue. Now we've already converted our fabric watch settings, so we're all set. So we're going to go ahead and say yes, we're going to continue, and we are going to activate. Uh, the MAPS capability and you'll see here it says MAPS has started monitoring with the FabricWatch active policy it lets you know which policy you selected and now FabricWatch is disabled and that's it we're done we've just uh, converted all of our FabricWatch settings and we are now running MAPS on this switch now we're going to do the exact same thing but this time we're going to do it using Network Advisor so you're going to see we're going to take a fabric here and not just a single switch but we're going to take an entire fabric and we're going to go in and we're going to enable maps on all of the switches in the fabric. So to do this we'll go up underneath the monitor menu we're going to select fabric vision then we select maps and then finally enable. Then we get a dialog that shows all of the different switches that Network Advisor is managing. So whether you're managing one switch, two switches, or 50 switches, you're going to see a list of all of them in any and all fabrics that are being managed by Network Advisor. You then highlight the switches that you want to enable maps on, push them over to the right side under the selected switches, and then tell it OK. Network Advisor is now going to enable maps on all of the switches that you selected and convert all of your fabric watch settings automatically. This process can take a few minutes depending on how many switches you're enabling maps on, but for the purpose of this demo we'll speed things up and get right to the results. If any of the switches were unable to enable maps, Network Advisor will tell you which ones and why. In order to modify or customize a maps policy, you first need to understand what a policy is. So let's start with some definitions. A MAPS policy is simply a collection of one or more rules. A rule has a name, it has a group that the rule applies to, a condition to monitor, which is typically a metric like an error counter or some other event, and then a threshold for the condition, a time period that you're monitoring for that threshold over, and then finally an action to take if the threshold is exceeded. Groups are simply collections of objects that you want to monitor with a common rule. There are over 20 different default groups defined within maps. In addition, if you want to create your own custom type of port group, you can do that as well. Whether you're configuring policies through the CLI or using Network Advisor, all policies are stored exclusively on the switch. Simply by enabling maps on a switch, you automatically get three default policies. There's the aggressive, the moderate, and the conservative policy. These default policies cannot be deleted or modified in any way. If you want a customized policy, you can either create one from scratch, or you can take one of the default policies and copy or clone it and then modify the copied version. In part two of this video, we'll get into more detail on how to customize maps, 
including how to create your own policies, modify and change rules, define your own groups, and also advanced capabilities available in Network Advisor like importing and exporting of policies. We'll also take a look at the Network Advisor dashboard capabilities that make it very, very easy to take a quick look and see if any of your maps policy rules have been violated.